During an interview, Elon Musk said, there is a one in a billion chance we are in base reality, therefore asserting the high probability we are in some form of simulated reality originating from base reality. It can be said that this argument is quite old, and one could argue it has been stated by science fiction writers, counter-enlightenment philosophers, or even religious teachings going back to ancient times. The modern and more reasoned argument can be credited to Swedish philosopher Nicholas Bostrom, who teaches at the University of Oxford. In 2003, Nicholas Bostrom released a paper titled Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? It is worth noting that Nicholas Bostrom doesn't actually argue we are living in a computer simulation, but rather argues it's one of three possibilities. Also, he specifically talks about ancestor simulations. This concept speculates that at the highly advanced stages of human-originating civilization, in what Nick Bostrom calls the post-human stage, it may be possible for the species to run detailed simulations of their ancestors. The first two possibilities are quite simple. Either we and all other possible human species destroy ourselves before we have the technology to run an ancestor simulation. Or we and all other possible human civilizations get to the point where we can run simulations but we don't. This is possibly out of a simple loss of interest. It's been deemed immoral, or there may be alternative ways to understand the past without the need for conscious participants to take part in the ancestor simulations. The third possibility is a little more complicated. This is the argument stating we are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. The argument goes something like this. When a human originating civilization gets to a post-human super advanced stage of civilization, we run detailed simulations of our forebearers or of people like our forebearers. Because computers will be so powerful, then these post-humans could run a great many simulations. It also assumes that consciousness could be hosted on a computer rather than just on biological computers like our brains. If a single human species can run many simulations of human species, then the vast majority of minds like ours will not be of the original race. Therefore, it's reasonable to assume we are one of the simulated minds, rather than being a part of the original race in base reality. If we don't think we are currently living in a simulation, then it's not reasonable to believe that one day our species could run detailed ancestor simulations. There are three key factors to this argument. The first is the assumption consciousness can exist on non-carbon-based biological neural networks and can in fact exist on other types of computers. The second key factor is the consideration that running many simulations of the human mind would be within the technological capabilities of a future post-human civilization. Right now, our computing power is not sufficient to run detailed ancestor simulations, but with 100, 1000 or 10,000 years of technological progress, we should get to the point where entire planets could be turned into computers with the power to run such a computationally expensive simulation. In addition, the developments of virtual reality and AI quantum supercomputers will add to our species' ability to create such a reality. The core of the argument is based on simple probability. If no human species can get to the necessary level of technological development to run an ancestor simulation, then the probability of us living in a simulation is near to zero. If human species can reach the technological capacity to run ancestor simulations, but the chances of them actually doing so 
is close to zero, then the chances of us being in a simulation is close to zero. But if human civilization can get to the point where we can run ancestor simulations, and these civilizations do, then the chances are they will run many simulations. At this point, there will be many more simulated realities than actual realities, meaning that the vast majority of people with our types of experiences will be in simulated realities rather than in base actual reality. The chances of us being one of the people in base reality is very small, and the chances of us being in a simulated reality is 99 plus percent. While this argument is very interesting, it is also significant for a number of reasons. Firstly, for futuristic speculation, as well as our understanding of metaphysical and religious concepts. It also suggests the high probability of a creator, and in such a simulation, the creator would be able to keep track of all the detailed belief states in all humans at all times. The creator could manipulate reality to their wishes. This would give the creator the power on the level described in religious text. Nonetheless, you can argue it doesn't change anything for us in the current state, as what difference does it make to us now if our consciousness is in base reality or a simulated reality? Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe by clicking the red button below. We will bring you more videos on philosophy, economics and technology.